Hello everybody and thank you for coming to today's presentation. I'd like to ask you to take a minute and think about the words in this quote. Tell me, I forget. Show me, I remember. Involve me and I understand. My name is Helena and today I'm going to talk to you about constructivism. In this presentation, I'm going to outline the theory of constructivism. I'm going to talk about its strengths and its limitations. And I'll also talk about my own personal experience as a student and as I approach my role as an educator. So, what is constructivism? The theory of constructivism is based on the idea that knowledge is developed, or constructed if you will, by the learner, by their own experiences. For a child, this might be experiences they've learnt from their parents, their teachers, their friends, their grandparents, even their cultural upbringing. The theory of constructivism believes that the teacher should assist the student in learning by getting them to actively discover for themselves. By getting a student involved, you are getting them to engage, and that is where the true learning process occurs. Lowen, 2010, Duquesne and McMore, 2016, explained that there are different forms of constructivism that exist today. These forms were principally developed by Jean Piaget and Lev Vygotsky. Piaget supported psychological constructivism. According to Swinburne Online, 2016, Piaget focused on the way we build an understanding of the world around us through assimilation and that is the way we understand new information by fitting it into what we already know. Then there's accommodation, which is altering existing knowledge based on new knowledge. Swinburne Online 2016 gives a great example of that. Uh, many years ago, we all believed the world was flat. Then through discovery and finding out new knowledge, we realize the world is round. This is accommodation. For a child, it might be similar to say, oh, I don't like that food, it doesn't look very nice. And then later on, they decide to try it and they find that they quite like it. This is another version of accommodation. It's replacing old knowledge with new knowledge. Now, Vygotsky believed that social practices were integral to learning and this led to social constructivism. And Duquesne 2016 says that this highlights the role of social and cultural elements in influencing our learning. When I was at school, I was taught by the traditional model of learning, which involved memorization of times tables, taking notes from textbooks, and then the odd test at the end of the year to see if I'd actually learned anything. Now thinking back to school, I often struggled with maths, which to this day still causes me anxiety if I have to approach a maths problem. The problem with maths is that I was never involved in the learning process. I was taught at rather than taught with. And this meant that during class I essentially zoned out. I was never fully engaged in the topic and because of this I really struggled with it. However, when I think back to a subject that I really liked, for instance, sewing, when I did it in year 10 for a term, I asked myself, why did I like it? Why is it something I want to pursue today? And I decided I'd buy a sewing machine. Now, year 10 was a really long time ago for me, and I bought home this sewing machine, and I still remembered how to thread it. And I asked myself, how did I remember this over everything I learned at high school? I still remembered how to thread the sewing machine. And the reason for it is because the subject engaged me and I learnt and getting through it by doing it myself. I did the action myself and it stayed with me ever since. Constructivists believe that we learn by observing. We experiment and we actively seek information as well as interacting with others. They believe that the role of the, the teacher is to assist students in actively working on how to construct knowledge. In my case, my teacher assisted me when I needed it for sewing. However, it was still up to me to work out how to do it. So, what does a constructivist approach look like when it comes to teaching? Students primarily work in groups. Now, this helps the interaction between one another and it also generates different perspectives of learning. 
Students are always encouraged to ask questions. No question is a dumb question in a constructivist classroom. All students are perceived as thinkers and contributors to class discussion. Teachers are seen as facilitators and they're guiding students to learn. And a teacher will assess a student not by giving them a test, but by interacting with them and observing them. So what are the strengths of constructivism? Constructivism encourages students to participate in learning rather than being passive recipients of information. It encourages students to take ownership over their learning processes and it encourages that sensory learning, it gets them involved. It values dialogues and interaction amongst student to student and student to teacher. And as Porter 2008, Duquesne McMore 2016 state, it moves the traditional approach of teaching towards listening and reacting to the students rather than just dictating at them. What are the limitations of constructivism? They do exist. Discovery learning has its limitations. Some students may lack confidence to explore and contribute in the class discussions. This could lead to them falling behind. Time management is another factor. A lot of work is involved in setting up the scaffolding in order to be able to teach in a constructivist way. This adds pressure to teachers. There are disadvantages to group work because it means the teachers need to monitor the class and if it's a large class, this could be a challenge. There's lack of structure. This may not work for all students particularly those with learning disabilities or behavioural disorders. Children with special needs may prefer working one-on-one -on -one rather than in group situations. For me personally, the constructivist approach to teaching is beneficial for students as it encourages learning by doing. For true learning to occur, the process needs to engage the student, capture their interest and their imagination. It must promote inquiry for the child, for them to want to learn. I truly believe that if a constructivist approach existed for me in my maths class all those years ago, I may have had a better experience with the subject and not be so anxious about it today. So, in conclusion, constructivism is about listening and responding to students in a way that promotes building of positive experiences and learning and nurturing their natural curiosity of inquiry. It encourages them to go out and have a go and find the answers for themselves. I hope that I've offered you another approach to teaching that you might now consider using in your own classroom. And this brings me back to my original quote, which I think sums up constructivism in a nutshell. Tell me, I forget. Show me, I remember. Involve me, I understand. Thank you very much.